All right. Welcome, everybody, and thank you very much for your patience. We've had technical difficulties all day long, um, but we are here. Uh, first, housekeeping. Make sure your name is right, which everybody's is, I could tell, because it's a small crowd. Um, if you would like to put your name, position, and district in the chat, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, we also have a link to the PowerPoint, which hopefully works, let us know in the chat. Um, links to the procedural manual and Muser in the chat, and a link to sign up for our fantastic new newsletter that is going to come out next week. So we are here to talk about federal indicators numbers four, nine, and 10. Before we get into that, we'll do a few introductions. So I am Jennifer Gleason um, with the supervision and monitoring team. And before I came to the department almost two years ago, I was a special ed teacher. Before that, I was an ed tech. Um, mm -hmm. The whole team is here, I think. Colette, you wanna come on and say hi? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Colette Sullivan. I'm the Federal Programs Coordinator, um, and I get to work with this phenomenal team every day. Awesome. And Leora? I just want to point out that I think it's been a little while since we've all been able to be at office hours. It's I kind know. Of I think so, too. Um, so I'm Leora Byrus, um, and I was also a, for, uh, a special education teacher prior to joining the department uh, four and a half years ago. And Carly is here. I'm Carly Thibodeau. I joined the team in July, and before that, I was a teacher for 21 years. And our Wrangler, Super Wrangler, Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Pelletier, and um, I have been with uh, DOE for about six years, and I support this fabulous team. Awesome. And if you would like to get in touch with any of us, because we are so much fun, here is our um, contact information. We welcome any kind of questions, concerns, cries of outrage. Love them all. Um, so like I said, <laughs> excuse me, the um, link to the procedural manual is in the chat box, and it's also here in the PowerPoint, as well as the link to Muser. So, what are federal indicators? So on February 1st of each year, every state needs to submit an annual performance report to the Office of Special Education Programs. And there are 17 indicators that this annual performance report reports on. Um, for Part B. Um, part C has their own. Um, so the APR is the state's evidence of compliance with IDEA, which as you know, we need to be compliant with IDEA to receive the funding we get from the federal government. And Part B refers to the section of IDEA that serves students age three to 22. And part C is for birth to two. So this link at the bottom there is to our website, and that is where you can see the, we call it the SPPAPR. So the SPP is the state performance plan, and that sets our targets, and then the APR kind of reports on those, where we are in those targets. So these um, that are on there right now, you could see it's from the 2020 2021 school year. So that is the report that was submitted February 1st of 2022. The most recent reports aren't up there yet because they're not really final yet. They get submitted to OSEP February 1st. And then I think sometime in April, OSEP gets back and says, oh, you have to fix these things. And then they get fixed and then it goes up on the website. So what you could see on our website is last year's APR. It's a very interesting read. I enjoy it. So you may have heard us when we are on site or talking to you or you're in trainings, um, talk about B11 and B13. 
those are the indicators that we look at as part of the audit cycle. Um, B11 is for um, child find, it's for that 45 day um, evaluation window. And B13 is for um, transition plans. We also look at indicators before B9 and B10. And these get, we get the data for these every year for every district. So you may hear from us if um, we need to look at some stuff for these, even if you are not in cohort on a particular year. B4 is about suspension and expulsion. Um, and there's two parts to it. So part 4A is about significant discrepancy of special ed students and part for B is about significant discrepancy of students with IEPs by race or ethnicity. And this indicator looks at suspensions that are greater than 10 days and expulsions greater than 10 days. So if you, it doesn't look at anything less than 10 days, put it that way. This is the, um, the description from the APR, so it's a little technical, but it looks at part A. Um, again, what I just said, looks at significant discrepancy in the rate of suspension and expulsion for children with IEPs. And for B looks at children with our IEPs by race, race or ethnicity. So this is what it looks like. That little blurb at the top, um, explains how how this gets how this data gets looked at, um, and that box in the middle is directly from the APR. This is what gets reported. So that is for A, and this is for B. So what I'm going to go back here. For A compares students in your district with IEPs to the state average of students with IEPs. So you're comparing suspension and expulsion for more than 10 days of your district to the entire state. We're not comparing to general ed students who don't have IEPs. We're only comparing students with IEPs. So if your district is more than three or more standard deviations above the state average, that's when you get um, pegged. Tagged isn't the right word, but I can't come up with the right word. So. Um, and for B, where we're looking at race and ethnicity, we're comparing your district students with IEPs of a certain race or ethnicity to that same thing, the state, all students with IEPs for the whole state. So, so the comparison for both 4A and 4B is the same. It's just a different subset within your district that gets looked at. So if you get flagged by, by these data, um, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong necessarily. It just means that we need to look at it a little deeper. So what happens is the data team lets us know and they say, okay, these districts got flagged and these are the specific students we need you to look at. So we will reach out and we'll say, okay, we need to look at these students. We need to look at all their written notices around suspension and or expulsion. And we'll go through and we have this little grid and we just take a lot of notes and we look at the whole process. Um, make sure that you followed regulations with manifestation determination, with documentation, your district policies and procedures are all set and you followed those. And if all that looks good, we report back to the data team and say, okay, everything is fine. If we um, have questions, we might want to have a conversation, you know, what, what was really going on here. Um, you may end up with a corrective action plan out of this if we find that something is um, kind of wonky with your policies and procedures or they haven't been being followed. So that is indicator four in a nutshell. A lot of information in a very small 
space. Any questions about four? And I do go back and forth for B4. The B just means that it's um, part B of IDEA. I don't see any questions, so I am gonna move on, but as you know, you can always interrupt me. Um, indicator nine, I don't believe we have ever had any district flagged for indicator nine. Um, so that's good, but you never know what's gonna happen in the future, so be prepared. So indicator nine is disproportionate represent representation of racial ethnic groups due to inappropriate identification. So this indicator is uses lag year data. So the APR will report on data from, so oh, I wrote it down there. So this latest APR from February 1st, 2023 used data from the 2020-21 school year. So it goes back farther than indicator four, which makes it really interesting. But anyway, so this is about identification of students as special education by race or ethnicity. So what we're comparing here is students in your district with IEPs of a specific race or ethnicity compared to still within your district, the overall representation of that race and ethnic or ethnicity. So we're comparing within your district. And this uses a risk ratio. So what that means is if, if you come up with a risk ratio of three, that means that students of this race or ethnicity are three times more likely to be identified than students overall in your district. That makes sense. Um, so like I said, here is our data over time from 2015. We have not seen anybody flagged for B9. Um, if you were, we would want to look at all of those files for those students that um, the data team lets us know we need to look at. And we would have a grid similar to this where we would just look for patterns really. Um, is it one evaluator that always identifies? Is it, are you always using the same assessments? You know, that kind of a thing. It might be a little different than this because we kind of, with, with indicator 10, um, we kind of figured it out as we went along because we just started getting those. So that's indicator nine, very short and sweet because we have not seen it. Any questions? Jennifer, it's Leora. Did you talk about, and you, I might have missed it because Lily just demanded her afternoon snack. Oh, of um, course. Did you, I know. Um, did you talk about what lag data, me, data means? I did indeed. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking. All right, I am going on to indicator 10, which also uses lag year data. And this is disproportionate representation of racial or ethnic groups in specific disability categories due to inappropriate identification. So that's a mouthful. So this is uh, similar to um, nine, but nine looks at identification overall and 10 looks at each um, disability category. So this compares it does it the same way as nine. So it compares students with IEPs of specific race or ethnicity within your district to all district students with IEPs. So, um, and again, it uses risk ratio. So if you're at a risk ratio of three, it means that students of that specific race or ethnicity are three times more likely to be identified with this specific 
disability category than your students with IEPs in general. So you're comparing within your district. We're not going out to the state. So we have, we had two identified last year and one identified this year, uh, not identified, but flagged. So we had to um, go look at them and we used the same um, grid and we filled it all out. Um, the one this year was actually found um, to have disproportionate number of white students in a specific disability category, um, which I think might come up more as Maine is the whitest state in the country. Um, so don't be surprised if that's a thing. It's just a weird thing. Um, so like I said, we had two last year, one this year. It was brand new to us. We had never been flagged for this before. Um, we did find one district that had the same evaluator was identifying this specific group of students. So we met with the um, special ed director and we found that because we're looking at lag year data, that um, evaluator had retired and they had already identified the problem and the new people that came in were did um, training on their own around this specific problem. So it turned out to be already taken care of by the time we got there. So that was good. So that I think is all I have unless Leora or Colette have anything, or Carly, have anything that I forgot, which, you know. I'm good. Well I'm done. Not to get too nerdy on you. <laughs> <laughs> no quizzes this time, Randy Lee. Is Jen there with you, too? It's just Alyssa there with you? Yeah, I don't know. Jen was here, and then she was gone, so she's probably upstairs. Rude. I forgot about it for a minute. I just next her. I do. Have a <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the best time to ask, but yeah. I had a question about manifestation determination. Yeah. Um. So we're supposed to be meeting when we get to day ten, but if we meet on like say day seven, do we have to meet again on day ten, or do we have to meet again on day seventeen, or do we just have to do it the one time? I think you just do it one time and I'm not sure. Let me get back to you, Randy Lee, because I have this conversation in my head that may have been a dream, but <laughs> I think that they're discouraging people from meeting too, too early in that process. Um, But let me get back to you on that. Okay. And maybe another question to write down um, to get back to me about would be, does it, like, it's a change in placement, whether it's, you're, you've been using the word suspension and um, expulsion, and I'm not sure if you're using it for the indicator or for that type of section, but, like, it's it could be a removal that's not under there, right? Like, if it's a repeated removal that they don't call a suspension or an expulsion, but they just keep doing it. If they're being removed, it's a suspension or expulsion. Okay, so e they, so just because they're not using that term, it still falls under that? Yes, and that is a thing that, um, was it OSEP put out a, a, yeah. a letter on that don't do that is what basically what they said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been tasked with, with taking a closer look at this for that exact reason. Okay. You know, it, it, you're, you know, sending the child home and saying it's for, you know, a, to give the child a break or, or something like that. But it's, I mean, it's, it's, you can call it what you want, but if the child is asked to leave, that's suspension or expulsion. And I totally agree with that, but I, it makes me wonder when I was listening to you talk, how do you know when schools are doing that? Because they're not reporting it as that, you know, like, so if you're only being told it made me one. That's what made me want to clarify that. <laughs> that is a good question. 
Yep. Yep. Doki. We're working to get clarification on that. Um, okay. As well as like abbreviated day, that piece as well. Like just trying to figure because it's a because it's an issue nationally. So just trying to figure out how to exactly that, how to look for it and how to how to address it. You said there was a letter by OSEP that was about that. Don't doing that or that yeah, they call it um, informal removals or something like that. Is okay, that what it's called. I'm gonna try. I, to you can yeah. you can probably Google that and okay. I, I might even have it printed downstairs in my office. I can I can look, Randy Lee, and um, see if I can't send you a link to it. Okay, I think we're going to try, Jen and I are going to try to do the question and answers that you have next Friday, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Um, I also have a, um, we have a fun fact on um, disciplinary removals. Maybe Carly, is there a way to add that to the um, contact hour thing? Or I can just send it separately. Like I can pull emails and just send You're it. So it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we lived without Carly. All right, I. This is our remaining office hours. Um. Abbreviated day is another hot topic lately, and that is the second one in April. Come have fun with us. Um, this is to sign up for the newsletter that um, Carly put the link in the chat box as well. Leora is working very hard on that. Comes out next week. Very exciting. And this is our link to a quick feedback form that Carly also just put in the chat box. Um, just a couple feedback questions and your email will get you a contact hour and a lot of goodies as well. I think what I'll do, if I can find that OSEP letter, I'll send it to Carly and, and Carly, maybe you could attach that when you send everything else out. Thank you. Awesome. Lise, I think the CDS transition meeting, we talked about doing that in the fall. Was that September we talked about doing that? Uh, I don't recall, but it did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was, Jennifer. It was Thank weird. you, Julie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're looking to um, get together with Roberta and her team and, and, and um, possibly do an original one in September and a short follow-up in like February, January, February. Oh, beautiful. How do you remember that? I can't remember what I know. That's impressive. Thank you, Julie. Awesome. You're welcome. Good question, Lise. All right. That is all we have. Very short one today. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, when you click on the link um, on the website to watch previous um, office hours. Um, it takes you to um, ones that were presented like in 2022. Like I was looking, I missed the one on the written notice, but it doesn't link me to the new ones. We, the written notice we just did two weeks mm -hmm. ago. So it's probably yeah. not up there yet. Okay. Um, but it should be, Julie, we got any, uh, an ETA for that one? I am uh, hopefully um, probably by next week. Okay, I just my last modules. I completely forgot to tell this about Renee, we could send you the PowerPoint in the meantime if that's helpful. Yes, that would be helpful. I know when you go to that link. Um, the last meeting that was posted there was from May of 2022. Is it? No. I don't know if the oh, wait, week wait, is wait, off you, or. Jennifer, I think they're going to the old page. Are you going to the old? Is it just a list or is it the professional learning page? Um, it is a list. It's the archive. But when you go to. Right, so like, that's old. There is an embedded link. Let me go back. 
I've looked and looked and looked. I'm like, maybe I'm in the when at the top of your office hour schedule, there yeah. is a link that says it's the old. It's the old link. Yeah. I'm going to put a new link in the chat right now. That would be hugely helpful because I like to sometimes go back and I'm like these are really old. Yeah, but I yeah. don't know where to find the new. Yeah. We have a brand new professional learning page that is so much easier to navigate. I okay. just put the link in the chat. Okay, so that's where I've been going, this new page. But then where do I find, once I'm there, it's if I go to Office Hour Archives? No, go to, go to IEP. IEP. All right, so I see literacy. And then there's now. modules. Okay. okay. All right. And then... And the written notice is under eligibility and forms. Oh, it's under eligibility and forms. Mm -hmm. So smart. Right. Yep, there it so is. So I got to go back to a different one. Eligibility and forms. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the written notice. And that is that. But that's I don't, the it's not one. the newest one, but it's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just need to dig in underneath each one of those to find mm -hmm. any ones that I may have missed. Absolutely. Yep. And we're okay. also in the process of um, updating office hours but in module form right and um those need to be edited which they will be edited next week okay. and then um jennifer post them up as okay. links to the modules okay and you said you would send me the powerpoint from that written notice yeah yes okay that would be hugely helpful that's my responsibility um most days um i'm i'm writing all of them for this this grade span that i'm working in so anything that I can make sure that I'm changing if it needs to be changed. That would be great. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Thanks for coming in late, Jen. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it. Thank you.